Good day everyone. Welcome to our online lecture series and this time we will continue our discussion on state. Previously, we discussed about state definition and its elements. And as a sort of review, we say that a state is a community of persons, more or less numerous, permanently occupying a definite portion of the territory, independent from outside or external control, and possessing a government wherein a great body of the inhabitants render habitual obedience. Out of the definition of what a state is, we get the four elements, which are people or the inhabitants of the state, territory or the place where the inhabitants live, government, and sovereignty. These four are these four elements are very important because we cannot say that a certain state is a state absence of any of the four elements. So please bear in mind those elements and of course the definition because out of the definition you can get the elements. This time we will continue our discussion on state but it's more on origin, functions, and powers. On the origin of the state, there are so many theories that have been um, formulated, that have been crafted by some of our well-known political scientists and theorists. And since it is a theory, we say that it is short of a fact until it is fully discovered and yet there are so many who follow us and we respect everybody's belief everybody's stance about it so i would like to inform everyone that you can uh, adopt any of this origins of the state or you can have your own formulation how a particular state exists based on a scientific and of course a basis of uh, facts and practices so let us have a rundown of some of the origins of the state One of the origins of the state is the theory, the divine right theory. And in the divine right theory, it holds that the state is a divine creation. So, the existence of the state is because of God and that it is from God whom the ruler obtained its power to govern the people. And the advocates of this uh, theory adhere to that or have that reference to the laws which Moses received at Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments. If you are a reader of the Bible, especially the King James Version Bible, you can read in Genesis 1.1 that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. So, the record of, in the Bible is that the earth and the heavens were created by God. So where can you find the state? It's in the earth. So everything that is in the earth is created by God. And that its existence are incumbent upon the blessing of the Lord. So the divine right theory begins only from that of the time Moses received the Ten Commandments of Mount Sinai that he used to govern the people of Israel on their way out from the bandage of Egypt to the Promised Land. Number two, we have the necessity or force theory. Under this theory, the states have been created through force so it means to say that there could be war, there could be threat, there could be intimidation, or there could be stealth in order for the 
state to be created. There are some kind of resistance, of course, from the weak. But since the weak is weak, the the can impose their will. They can impose their power. They can impose their uh, want upon the weak. So under the necessity or force theory states are led by some great warriors and these great warriors are the one who captivate them who capture them and then impose their will if you can return to the pre-spanish philippines during the time of the datos where the dato led a certain village and then another dato will conquer another village and the weak village will be under that of the superior village then the two villages will become one so it's becoming greater in number and bigger in population until it becomes a state so that's one of the uh, theories the necessity or force theory Number three theory is the paternalistic theory. And under this theory, the state is accordingly a product of the enlargement of the family. That from two persons, a couple, they bore children, children upon children children upon children and family upon family that the authority of the father or the mother is very visible and then this becomes now a clan that the group of clan become now a tribe the group of tribes became now a nation and then to becoming a state but it all started within the family or the paternalistic theory those who advocate this um, theory they believe that the family is the very foundation of the state so in the philippines we still have that in our uh, basic social institution we always go back to a family as the most important and basic social institution that we have as a state the next theory is social contract theory under the social contract theory it asserts that uh, the early states have been formed by deliberate and voluntarily compact a voluntary compact so People form a society and then they organize a government for common good. So, social contract is voluntary. It means to say out of the very nature of man to socialize, out of the very nature of man to have a uh, companion that the social contract theory has been uh, created or has been uh, theorized that when a person has that in mind to respect others he will also in return receive the respect if he doesn't want to kill anybody because he believes that it is wrong then he is also expecting from anybody to do the same that's what we mean by social contract theory and because of that uh it widens, enlarges, that it becomes what a state now. So that's all for the origins of the state. This time we will go to the functions of the state. Actually, there are only two discussion under this, but these are very important. These functions are very important because you cannot insist upon the state to have the following to give you the following to let you have this uh 
things to do or to let you have these things to happen without actually knowing where do the government, where do the state have to get this or where do the state have to do this, have to make it. So let us look into the functions of the state. The first function is entitled a constituent function. When we say constituent function, this is where the state should do. This is where the state should be prioritizing because this will make the state and its people more um, intimate in its sense. Constituent functions of the state constitute the band of society. It is compulsory or mandatory in nature. Why? Because a state cannot maintain its own operation, its own integrity, if the state will not, this, will not work for this. Example, maintenance of peace and order, peace and security. How can you attain a, an improved society if there is always war, if there is always terrorism, if there is always kidnapping, if there is always bombing? So it's a priority of the state to maintain peace and order and security and that it form part of the constituent function of the state. The other one is ministrant. Ministrant is the state function to which it is called not mandatory because mostly it is based upon the budget, upon the fund allocation, because if there is no fund allocation, there is no budget, we do not expect of the implementation of this. It is undertaken by ways of society. So therefore, it is not mandatory. Example of a ministrant function of the state construction of, uh, for example, highways, uh, repair of highways, maintenance of highways. Mostly our public works are constructed, are done because there are funds available. If there are no funds available, we do not expect our government to have a good roads or our state to have these good roads, to have this uh, functional, it's called building functional uh, hospitals because public works is not a constituent function, but only ministrant. It is based on a budget or on the funds available of the state. Well, let us now come to the inherent powers of the state. There are three inherent powers of the state. When we say inherent powers, once a state is born, once a state is established, these inherent powers are likewise born or likewise established. It need not a constitutional guarantee in order for these powers to exist. It can only be limited by the Constitution, but the Constitution cannot abolish these inherent powers because inherent, as the term denotes, is inherent, it is already there. So, the inherent powers of the state make a state more established, make a state functional because these inherent powers of the state gives the state uh, the power to create its own finances, the power to regulate its own people, the power to get what the private properties, what the private people has. So, inherent powers of the state will always be there as long as the state maintains and keeps its definition as a state. So, what are these inherent powers? One is 
the police power. So again, as I was telling you, police power is inherent. It is already there once the state exists. It is always in partner with the state element. So with this as an inherent power, the government cannot say to remove this particular power because it is already there. Well, in the constitution that uh, the state and its people have uh, signed can only limit the powers, the police power, but never to abolish it. Aside from that, police power is legislative in character. When we say legislative in character, because our legislatures are the representatives of the people. So our right as um, Filipino, for example, we elected our representatives, we placed them in Congress. So it is on their, their part, it is on the part of Congress to exercise the police power. In what way? By making, passing, enacting, ordaining, or regulating laws and regulations. So they make laws, they amend laws, they pass laws, they enact. This is a valid exercise of the legislative uh, power in order to um, implement the police power of the state. Now, when the legislature passes a law, usually it regulates individuals' rights and property for the purpose of the general welfare. That's why some people say, why is the government banning me from entering the malls? For example, there is this application in the city of Naga, uh, Isalbar. Under the Isalbar, you can only enter uh, premises, public and private premises in the city of Naga upon showing of the Isalbar application where you are registered. And uh, that was questioned before the court because accordingly it's a curtailment of their freedom of travel. Well, we, let's wait for the decision of the court on that. But again, the general welfare is always the paramount consideration in passing and in exercising the police power of the state. Example of police power measure is passing of a law for the maintenance of peace and order. And then um, it will also for the protection of life, liberty, and of course, property. And also, I would like to... Um, inform you that in order for the police power to be exercised there must always be a law that is being passed by congress in order for this to be in effect the second inherent power is the power of imminent domain or the power of expropriation now the power of expropriation is also an inherent power because it is exercised by the state even without the constitutional provisions because as I was telling you in here in from the moment the state is born this power is also born so it is also legislative in character in the sense that there must be a law passed by Congress for the exercise of this power commonly in the exercise of imminent domain there is a possession or taking of a possession of private property. 
and that that private property taken by the state will be used for public purpose so once a private property is taken once a private private property is expropriated the purpose of that is for public use not for private purposes and another thing to consider once a private property is taken for public use there must be payment of just compensation the payment of just compensation is within the power of the court to determine based of course on existing uh, considerations like the place where the property is taken the property classification and of course the size of the property so things to consider in the payment of just compensation so it is not for free it is for payment when a private property is um, owned by a certain private individuals expropriated just let me say thank you for your property the government can now use it now it will not be like that it has to undergo processes it has to undergo um, certain stages of uh, expropriation in order for the government to take it over and uh, the government cannot simply take that without of course paying the owner of its uh, actual and of its use which we call the payment of just compensation the last among the inherent powers of the state is the power of taxation again power of taxation is also an inherent power and that it cannot be set aside by the constitution so it is also legislative in character in that only congress has the power to uh, pass laws concerning taxation in the republic of the philippines for example so once congress pass a law it there is always an exaction of money and properties why do we need that because the government is needing money to raise revenue why is there a need to raise revenue so in order to finance the different government programs projects and of course services things that are needed to to operate the government without this power of taxation there will be no taxes to be collected and we know that taxes are the lifeblood of the state without taxes the state cannot operate without taxes the state cannot give its services to the people without taxes it will be impossible for the state to live so therefore this power of taxation is the fluid that makes the state alive and therefore we Filipinos paid taxes because we want the government to pay for the expenses that it is incurring, especially this time. And therefore, we need to have a law that will say how much, who will pay, what they are going to pay. So that belongs to the legislative branch of the government. And in order for the government to have a better um, collection of taxes, we have the Bureau of Internal Revenue or the BIR, which collects national government taxes like uh, when you eat in a fast food chain, for example, you pay 100 pesos. 12 pesos of that goes to the government as part of the value added tax because we are paying 12 percent value added tax if you are already 
a professional, you are earning an income. Every time you receive a salary, the government through its agents withhold portions of, the, of that earning for your income tax. You also pay, you buy documents for, uh, you buy documentary stamps for your documents. For example, if you get your transcript of records, if you get a um, certification from the government agencies which issued a certificate, there is always an attached documentary stamp. When you sell property, there is an attached documentary stamp. So, things that you need to consider in order for you to uh, share a portion in the government coffers. That is why we are sudden when there are reports that our money, our taxes, goes to the pocket of some of our scrupulous politicians. So, we are saddened to those reports. But again, even those things are happening, we cannot say that we will not give our tax because of those. Because taxation is an inherent power and it cannot just be set aside simply because there are reports that are being uh, reported that are being uh, that are happening. But let us just improve our system, especially on uh, collection, and let us file cases against those unscrupulous people who are in hoodlum with our with other politicians and government officials. So I hope I was able to give you uh, the input on the origin, functions, and powers of the state. We will continue more our discussions on this in the next days to come. Thank you very much and good day.